the DOD UAP report was released on June 25th with a tremendous amount of mainstream media attention and fanfare. And then within a week, it was old news. Not just the report, but the entire topic. We went from daily news coverage, speculation, special reports and features to practically zero coverage in the space of a week. And it was back to the old news headlines. Here we are two months later, and it seems like kind of nothing has changed. I mean, what gives? Did a lid come down on the entire topic, preventing any more coverage? Or is it just the same old news cycle recycling itself? What's going on behind the scenes? And what are we not hearing about? These questions and more we'll be covering here today on Shifting the Paradigm with Lou Elizondo. Lou, welcome to the show and for joining us here today. It's so exciting. Christina, thank you so much for having me. Thank you uh, to your wonderful audience. You know, it's it's always such it's such a blast always always talking with you. Absolutely. You know, you said something really interesting and I I've been dying to address this, and I'm going to address it on on, on your show. All right. People say, you know, it, it's crickets out there. No one's saying anything. There's no new news coverage. Yes, precisely, because real work is being done right now. Um, I, I, I'm in the middle of writing a, a, a thought piece, you know, and and I compare disclosure to to three things: nuclear submarines. Uh, I compare it to dark energy, and I, I compare it to earthquakes. Um, why is that? Because all of these things occur uh, and exist and you can't see it. You can't see it. You can't really. It's, it's hard to detect. Um, but just because you can't see something doesn't mean that there's not something happening uh, beyond be, beyond what you can observe. You know, earthquakes, the same same thing. Right. You you have all this energy and movement occurring right beneath your feet in, in the Earth's crust. And it's only when there's a sudden release of energy does everybody now feel the effects, right? Well, it's the same thing with disclosure. There's a lot of things happening behind the curtain right now, a lot of exciting things that are really taking this conversation to the next level. Um, unfortunately, the general public doesn't see it, um, it because some of these things haven't yet come quite to fruition. But make no mistake, Christina, we, we are absolutely 110% engaged. And I think... I think your audience is going to be absolutely thrilled when when some of this stuff comes to light because you know what it is going to have a big media splash. Um, there is uh, 60 minutes that's going to be replaying their their uh, their their episode uh, on this topic again this Sunday, uh, and mm -hmm. they're doing that because they tend to do repeats. They're the best best shows. They do repeats when on during off season, uh, but there's a reason why they're doing it, and I think. Um, I think there's a lot happening. Um, I, I don't think actually. I know because we're we're part of some of that 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 uh, those efforts. Um, but again, there's a lot going on. Just in, like I talked about earthquakes, you know, a, a nuclear submarine. This is this is a, 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 a if you will, a submarine is is a boat basically that goes underwater. That's the size of a si skyscraper, right? And yet it's completely invisible. It's all under the surface, and you only know it's there when it breaks the surface, or you know. <laughs> bad things happen. Um, but that's very much, again, like what we're doing now. There's a lot happening subsurface. Uh, I'll discuss with you, if you want, some of those things. I've received over 200 questions via and we're Reddit. we're going to answer every one of them. <laughs> in an hour. or well, less than an hour now. 45 minutes. We're going to answer all 200. No, no, we're not. But I got them on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, email, Instagram in the last two weeks. And of course, you know, I will not be able to ask all of them. I picked a few of the ones that I found the most intriguing and original to ask along with my own. Um, I also want to say that I can't follow the live chat accurately while we are streaming here live. So if you have a burning hot original question to ask then please help out this channel by doing a super chat which will of course grab my attention from the rest of the chat and will be asked so believe it or not we had a super chat question already given to uh given to us by uh, so we are at around 1 p.m right so like five hours ago uh for 20 dollars supporting the channel thank you so much so and the question is I'm condensing this question into one here. So it says, can we understand the psychology of those operating the UAP through a 
through observation, giving us signs that they enjoy toying with their pilots, even mischievously, therefore showing that their evolution could possibly be similar to ours? What are your thoughts on that? Wow. Uh, first of all, I've never been asked that question before. Thank you very much. Very insightful. Good question. Um, you know, the problem with, with this topic is we tend, because we're human beings, we tend to assign anthropomorphic characteristics to to everything in nature. Um, every time I play with my dog, what I do, oh, you're such a good little boy, right? And, and, and you know, there's, I, I'm connecting with a sentient being. And as such, I ascribe to it human characteristics. Now, uh, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I think we tend to do that the same thing when we're talking about the UAP topic. We tend to ascribe human motivations, human intent, human psychology, sociology as well, to, to this thing, because what we see are observations there that defy our current understanding. And in order for us to better rationalize what we are experiencing and seeing, it's easier for us to put it in a nice, neat little box that we understand. Um, but, you know, Christina, you said it in the beginning of the show here about thinking outside the box. By the way, I, I, I love that part of your show in the beginning, that that intro. Um, but we we have to force ourselves to to think outside of the box. In fact, we have to we have to presume there's no box at all. And, and that's that's hard to do because um, it goes against uh, everything we are as a human species. Um, whether or not there is an intent to toy with the human race, um, it's certainly possible. But then you have to presume that whatever it is, is more human, more similar to us uh, than, than, than perhaps we, 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 we realize. Uh, and you know that that in, in itself is kind of a scary notion. Are we dealing with it with something else that's very similar to human beings and as far as thought process and motivation? I certainly hope not, because we tend to be a pretty unpredictable, violent species. Um, I'm not sure I would want another human-like uh, species having access to that type of technology. Um, because they may do human type things, right? They may react in ways that we as humans do. And, and, and it's, and it's not, that's not always a, a good thing. So I guess my question is, is it, your question is, is, is it possible? Yeah, it's absolutely possible. Uh, and they, they, they could be toying with us, but, um, it's also possible that they're not, and that we are looking at these observations of performance and, and the way they they're maneuvering. And we are ascribing it attributes that may not necessarily be there. Um, but it is the only point of reference that we have. And so therefore we ascribe these, these human type attributes. John has a question. Thank you so much, John, for the 50. Wow. Um, he says, Lou, uh, will there definitely be anything definitively, definitively non-human enough to shut down all debunkers coming anytime soon to put on the front page of the New York Times? The 23-minute high-def video, um, anything we haven't heard about yet, we can't lose momentum. No, I think you're right. We can't lose momentum, and and I don't I don't think we are. Um, I've mentioned this before. We are in a, a marathon relay race. We're not in a sprint. Um, let's just reflect very quickly on the last three years, just the last three years. Okay, let me let me, if I may, remind your audience just how much we collectively, all of us, your audience included, have been able to accomplish in just three years. First of all, you have the acknowledgement that the UFO program called ATIP existed and was real. You also have the acknowledgement that those three videos were absolutely real and they were taken from DOD weapon systems. You also have the acknowledgement that we have no idea what they are, that they are truly unidentified aerial phenomena. You have the establishment of a UAP task force, not unidentified aerial balloons or drones, but unidentified aerial phenomena. You have classified briefings being provided to Congress. Then you, on top of that, you have briefings being provided to the president of the United States and the president admitting that he received briefings on this topic. Then on top of that, you have a 180 day report, which I suspect we're gonna talk about a little bit today and, and what that means. And on top of that, you have a, a, a signed document by the DepSec Def, uh, that came out and said, hey, look, Kathy Hicks saying, um, we need to develop a strategy, a long-term strategy, not just something to answer this 180-day report, but long-term going into the future, we need to provide resources, assets, and talent 
behind it. Then you have recently in the new latest legislation language saying that not only do we now want a 180 day report, but we want to report every 90 days. And oh, by the way, that includes anything that you haven't reported to us before. So get ready because there's a lot of information coming out. And then, oh, on top of that, you have an IG evaluation and an IG investigation on the handling of this topic within the Department of Defense and the intelligence community. So that has all happened in the last three years. In the last three years, you have countries like Japan coming out and establishing a bilateral relationship with the United States government for the sole purpose of sharing UAP related information. Um, you know, that ain't a bad track record, folks. And, and, and you all made that happen. So, yeah, I get it. We're itchy for the we're, 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 we're waiting for that next dopamine hit. But let's not lose lose sight of, of how far we really have come and, and where we need to go. Um, the last thing we want to do is prematurely do something that uh, is not quite ready for prime time. And uh, it, it winds up working counter to what we're trying to do. So uh, the good news is there's, there's a lot happening and there's going to be a lot more happening. Uh, you know, I said we're, we're, we're firmly into third gear right now. And we are. Uh, there's some things in the next two and three months that I'm personally involved with and my colleagues like Chris Mellon. Uh, that I think, you know, if if the public were to find out, they'd be pretty surprised um, and, and extremely excited. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're moving right along. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I also I, I quickly just want to tell people that are listening because we have quite an audience today. And I want to say some Troop Super Chats are actually falling off my list. So if your question gets skipped, uh, please just paste it again as a reminder without the Super Chat and a copy in the moderator name, just because we're getting a lot of things happening right now. So Russell has a question. And before I get to Russell, Charles says, tell Lou I love him. Stay strong and stay somber. Thank, thank you, Charles. And also a big thank you to uh, someone, I guess, who put on Twitter a, a, an artist rendition of, of me. Uh, far too kind. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you certainly drew me better than I really look in real life. So I thank you for that. Um, I couldn't really pronounce the handle. It, was, uh, it had some, some characters in there I didn't recognize, but a little alien head as an icon. And uh, anyways, just wanted to say thanks. Oh, that's that's cute. Um, you you have some really big fans. You have people rooting for you. John Russell asks. Also, thank you so much for the fifty. That's amazing. What has been your most memorable or dramatic UFO UAP paranormal experience? Wow. Uh... Just lay it on us, Lou. <laughs> I have to be careful. Um... <laughs> You know, uh, great question. Um, should should I pass some drinks over to you? Uh, you know, I, yeah, I think I think that's a that's a that's a question that needs to be answered probably on its own um, it, it, it's it's it, its own uh, podcast where we're going to dedicate the entire time to it. Um, look, I've I've lived uh, an extraordinary life. Um, I've told people I'm an unextraordinary man living through extraordinary times. Uh, I've been privy to things that um, I I don't understand. Um, I'll just put it as simple as that. Um, this is a strange universe we live in. It's a wondrous universe we live in. It's a huge universe we live in, uh, both at the grand scale of things and even at the micro and nano levels. Uh, it's, 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 you know, there, there are, when you say what's the greatest experience I've had or most wondrous experience involving UAP and or paranormal, um, that's a loaded question. Uh, and again, that's a question that I, I, at some point I'll, 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 I'll probably share. Uh, it wasn't one incident. Uh, you know, for those who know who I am and my involvement with folks like Hal Pudoff and Kit Green, um, you know, those those ties go way back. And, um, you know, there's things I've, I've, I've been exposed to that I, that I can't explain. As a scientist, you know, with my background, you know, in microbiology and immunology, uh, and I, you know, I, I'm careful not to to really talk about it publicly because it's really easy to go down that rabbit hole of the woo, and as as interesting and intriguing as it may be, um, it can also serve as a distraction because at the end of the day, they're just my observations and my own experiences, and I wouldn't want that to to taint the collection of information and, and analysis that needs to be done uh, in in the UAP topic. You know, a lot of the best reporters, you have no idea what political affiliation they are. You don't know if they're they're conservative or liberal. You don't know what religion they are. 
because they, they try to remain objective. And even though they do have personal beliefs, um, you know, it's, it's, it's less relevant to, to the pursuit of truth. Um, for me, ultimately, this is about truth. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of truth out there. And, uh, you know, one just has to talk to, to, to indigenous people here in, in our country that have been here for millennia. Uh, they have incredible, fascinating stories. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think there's a lot, a lot to be said. And I, I hope one day I can share some of my experiences in a way that people aren't going to judge me or judge anybody else I was with. Um, the problem is we're, t- we're too early in the conversation right now. It's too much of a distraction. Um, too many people need to come out of the shadows to continue this conversation. Uh, and by me going into my own personal experiences um, could, could, could hinder that process. And uh, so with all due respect, love the question, uh, very sincere. And, and it, I'm really struggling because I, I really want to have this conversation. Um, but probably now is not the time, unfortunately. Well, we will all be waiting when you do tell the story. We'll all be there like biting our nails and be like, oh my gosh, she's going to tell it. So we're excited <laughs> for the future we got the when it comes to you. And, uh, 3D sunglasses, right? And, oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. My next question is, is, Obviously, the mainstream media has shifted its focus since the report dropped. But to me, you know, I've been shocked at how quiet they are on the topic of UFOs now. In your opinion, do you think this is because an official lid of silence has been dropped or is it just a natural curve of disinterest? No, it's it's, it's neither. We, we've turned the dial down. We, we, had the, we had the oven cooking and we had to get it up to operating temperature of 500 degrees. I don't need to continue that gas right now to go up to 800 degrees. 800 degrees. We need to keep it at 500. And sometimes you have to turn back the gas a little bit to, to keep the oven temperature constant. Uh, remember, this is, this is a long game. Um, you, you don't want to waste all your, 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 your magic bullets, your rounds, uh, prematurely. Everything has to be very strategic. This is this is a long-term campaign. Um, and this isn't just, um, you know, this isn't the Super Bowl where we, you know, have a halftime show and you have pyrotechnics and whatnot. Um, you know, this is, this is real life. And what we're trying to do is, is keep this conversation going and, and letting people catch their breath. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in the world right now that demand our attention. There's things like Afghanistan, you know, there's things like COVID and the, and the new Delta variant. Um, you know, we have to let people catch their breath and we can't, we can't be selfish and just dominate and consume the narrative 24 hours a day because people will get fatigued and eventually they'll get annoyed. So, so, you know, again, this, this is something that, that comes in waves. Um, I've, I've said this before for the last three years. Uh, we're not in the business of satisfying idle curiosity. We're in the business of disclosure. And, and, and to do disclosure right, you know, you, you, have to, you have to be very methodical about it, very strategic about it. But know that there's a lot happening right now. Um, we, we have, some of us have deliberately made the decision to throttle back a little bit and let every, everybody else, everything else catch up and then continue to move forward, if that makes sense. And by the way, I know I'm going to be upsetting some people out there saying, you know, you don't have the right to do that. Well, it's not just me. I mean, anybody can get up here and champion the cause if they want to, but it's 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 a strategy we collectively uh, have chosen to take um, because because quality matters, right? Who, who who in the media is is presenting the information? What is the evidence that they're presenting? The last thing you want to do is make some proclamation and not have the evidence to back it up because that that will hurt disclosure. Oh, yeah. And all of us definitely want quality over quantity. Do you want to have a McDonald's burger or do you want to have a really good burger? Yeah. Do you want Ruth's Chris or, you know, do you want not? Do you want something else? You know, John has another question and he says, Lou, your thoughts on Sam Harris saying he and his science colleagues are getting classified better videos from the CIA that show it's non-human. And he says they need his advice for how to break the truth to the public. Uh, who's Sam Harris, if I may ask? That's Your a serious question. Kind of uh, yeah, hopefully John can clarify that. 
Well, because you know, I also don't know. If you're receiving briefing from the CIA, then clearly you're obviously in the scattered castles and JWICS database, right? So I should be able to pull you up and see if you have a top secret clearance and where your tickets are being held and, and see that you're having these meetings with these individuals that you, that you claim you have. Um, if you do, great. Welcome to the party. It's about time. Um, but if you're just talking crap and, and full of crap and just, uh, you know, making nonsensical, so nonsensical claims without evidence, then... Uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I I don't know who Mr. Harris is, but that doesn't mean necessarily that that he's not telling the truth. I just personally don't know him, but I can certainly find out if he's if this yeah. person's having briefings. You know, with the with the CIA, I can't imagine that they're going to be asking somebody who's not connected to the National Security Council uh, or a think tank um, on on you know how to have this conversation with the American well, people. When you let us know, or when, when, when you find out, please let us know. Sen sure. Zubin has a question. And I'm sorry, we're going through these so quickly. There's Let's go. Just, people are just like, they have let, they want to ask you a lot of things. So they say, hi, Christina, perhaps you could ask him if he thinks these UAPs travel using some sort of warp drive and that way probably avoid the massive G force. <clears throat> wow. Uh, uh, Sen Zubin, is that how you pronounce that? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess so. I like the name. I like. The yeah, name I do too. Name. Yeah, uh, I love it. Um, you know, that's certainly one of the hypotheses. Uh, I'd say probably at this point more of a theory than even a hypothesis. Mm. There's a lot of mathematical equations. In fact, you know, what, give me a second. I'm gonna show you something. Hold on. All right. Guys, I want to say thank you for everyone that is watching, that has questions, that even sent in questions through the emails, Reddit, Twitter, through everything. He's okay, a great so guy to ask questions, too. One of the books um, that we had an A-tip um, that I, I looked at a lot was this book here, okay? And it's Frontiers of Propulsion Science. And you can see in there that... Uh, it's uh, in some names you might recognize there. <laughs> and when you open this book up, it's uh, really just a, a huge amount of mathematical equations. Uh, and oh, let's there we go. Mathematical equations and whatnot. Um, this is important because this this is exactly how we look at the potential of what what advanced propulsion might look like um, and what those signatures might look like. And so. Is it possible that these things are, are warping space time? That certainly seems, you know, to be a really, really good theory. Um, certainly the mathematical equations and scientific models suggest that. Uh, GD has a question. Thank you so much for the 20. And they say, one, does the A, does the IAA parentheses FY 2022 require the UAPTF slash NASIC to report to Congress on UAP events pre FY 22. Yes, it does. That's the key. Every oh? 90 days and whatever you haven't reported in the past since the 1940s is supposed to be reported to Congress. Okay. Second question they have is, did the USG discover the exotic matter Pure USG um, custody? Um, That's a good I, question. I have to be very careful how I answer any questions about exotic material uh, or, or anything like that. I have said for the record, it is my belief that the U.S. government is in possession of it. I am not at liberty to elaborate any more than that, unfortunately. Um, of course. At least not now. But when that does happen, I'll have to ask you again. Absolutely. <laughs> the the last thing is, what are your thoughts on the UK con conding report? You know, plasma on radar, et cetera. Yeah, condine report. Well, you look, you know, there's a lot of prosaic explanations for a lot of things. And at the end of the day, uh, the, the report that we had to Congress, 180 day report, um, there were 144 incidents and only one of them was solved. One. And right. I think more importantly, that of the 144 incidents, um, 142 of them were in the last year and a half alone and by the Navy only. So uh, that's important because in a year and a half in just involving the Navy, uh, you had 142 incidents. And oh, by the way, um, we only figured one of those out. And then furthermore, in the report, it says specifically that uh, most of the reporting 
never went re- never went reported because of a fear of stigma and 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 some sort of retribution professional retribution which by the way ask me how i know um it is real and so uh i if you look at that just do the simple math and let's just say 10 percent of these incidents that were reported that means that the u.s navy experienced over 1400 incidents in the last year and a half alone uh, and uh, most of them went unreported. Uh, we have no idea what they are, and that's just the Navy. So what about the Air Force? What about the Army, right? What about everybody else? And not just the last year and a half, but what about the last decade? What about the last three decades? What about the last 70 years? Um, so great, great question. Chuck has a question. Thank you so much. Also, your profile pic makes me smile. Um, he says, Christina, Jimmy had a guest on Wednesday on Jolly. Excuse me. <clears throat> she is ex-military and recently did a press conference in D.C. announcing her intentions to revisit an alien base in the Mojave Desert. Can you ask Lou about this? Sounds amazing. You know, great. Uh, you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Um, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all I got to say is good luck. You know, I hope I hope she's right. Uh, but um you know, I, uh, I I probably wouldn't quit my day job just right now to go, you know, run in the desert and try to find an alien base um, somewhere in the Mojave Desert. Uh, you know, I I, I think um, I think there's a lot of people who 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 want to um, be part of a narrative. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know Anjali, just like I don't know uh, you know the other individual. Um, from uh from area 51 you know bob lazar everybody asks me what do you think of bob lazar i don't i can't i never met the gentleman you know um i i, I don't I don't have an opinion uh, I, I don't have an that. opinion of Anjali. you know i i think it's very careful when you look at someone's um career um you have to look at the nuances um as a government employee, you have a rank and you have authority. As a contractor, uh, you, you, pr- you provide services to to the government and the customer. Um, you know, it, it's important that people like if you were to see my 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 resume, which I, I think is public, I don't know, but but at some point, if you sure it will be, um, you can see precisely where I was assigned, what I did, what my roles and responsibilities were, and what 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 I the type of duties I performed. Now let's jump back into the questions. So. Um, let me let me find it because I know I'm getting lost. But CJ says, thank you so much, by the way. He says, I'm a huge, huge fan of Lou. Same. And <laughs> you were my introduction to UFOs, and I still can't get enough. Thanks. Do you have any UFO books you recommend? Ooh, boy, that's a loaded question. A good question. You know, I I hate making recommendations because different people are going to read different books and and take the information differently. There was a book that was given to me by a gentleman named Dean Johnson in Washington D.C. when I was I was there uh, with Chris, my colleague Chris Mellon, and uh, you know we've had the the privilege of speaking with him a few times, and he shared with me a book, and you know people share with me a lot of books all the time. You got to read this. You got to read this, and, and I do. Um, but he he suggested one, and it's a uh, it's a little science fiction novella. It's, it's about three stories in this little tiny book, and it's called Chains of the Sea, uh, not Chains in the Sea, Chains of the Sea, and it is the second story in that book. It's a short story, maybe 30, 40, 50 pages long, um, but it it is a wonderful little story because it provides a completely different potentiality of of what this means now i don't necessarily subscribe to it let me just say that but what i'm saying is it forces you to think remember we talk about the box right this forces you to think outside of the box a a completely different paradigm of what something might be what the phenomenon might be what paranormal might be what our interaction might be and i i i found it really original and it really forced me to 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 think and 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 reconsider and recalibrate my my own position on on the topic of UAP. And so, um, if there was a book I would recommend, it would be that. Um, again, I don't make a penny from it. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. I'd probably probably not very much money. You could probably download it for free, I imagine. Um, but it's um, again, it's 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 it. I think it's a unique perspective that's certainly worth at least just reading because it forces you to think about things in a slightly different way. 
NM UAP has a question. Thank you so much for the 50. That's amazing. It says, aliens don't scare me. The Chinese and the Russians do, unfortunately. Should I be nervous that some of this may be um, these adversaries? Well, it's certainly a potential. It's, it, it appears to be exceedingly unlikely uh, because we've been seeing this technology since, since the late 1940s. And it's, by the way, documented in official U.S. government documentation. So, so we've been dealing with these things. And of course, everybody knows about the Tic Tac in, in, in 2004, but they might be surprised to know that there were other Tic Tac sightings going back to the 60s and the 50s where, where they were described as white flying butane tanks, right, 40 feet long, or white flying throat lozenges. Um, it, you know, we, we were describing these things based upon the genre at the time. Um, but they were still performing exactly the same way that Commander Fravor and, and Alex Dietrich uh, witnessed in 2004. So if there is a country that has this beyond next generation technology and they had it since the late 1940s, we're in real trouble. Right. And so I think the likelihood of that is exceedingly small. If you look at where the world was, let's just take the United States, which was probably the most technologically advanced at the time. Um, where were we in the late 40s? Well, we were just unlocking the secrets of the atom. Uh, we were just entering the jet age and we were still decades away from, from going into space. Um, you know, that's, 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 that's a pretty big pill to swallow. Um, uh, if you, if you want to consider that some country at the time that, you know, had the technology of, of horse and ox, uh, pulling, pulling buggies, um, it's, it's really unlikely. Um, the signature and the amount of money and resources it would take to develop that technology and then keep it secret uh, for this long, I, I think is highly improbable. We have another question and it says, and I don't know if I'm showing it, but it'll, I'll, I'll end up showing it. But the question is, the devisitation effects of climate change seem to be upon us as a species, and if not dealt with, may lead to mass extinction events in the near future. Has the connection between the UAP and climate change been discussed or considered at all? Great question. You know, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, you know, uh, no, not in, in, in an official sense. It's been bantered about by some people who, who've kind of kind of quietly expressed that that uh, opinion that hey maybe the two are related, uh, but there's never been any earnest study into that. Uh, not that I'm aware of, certainly not with ATIP. Uh, but you know it's 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 interesting. It really is an interesting question, and maybe that's something that maybe we 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 should consider. Um, I, I I think why not. And that was somewhat of a popular question when I had posted it online. I did get a few questions on something in between those lines. John has another question. Thank you. And says, Lou, some high level people have said that the public should not know the truth, can't handle it. But they're already but they they're already been way more than enough to admit by higher ups to admit it's non-human. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I <laughs> Boy, this is going to get me in trouble too. I, I hate, I, I hate going back and forth on this, and I do. I'm the worst offender at this because I, I think that that the American people and the world deserve to know the truth. I think you know whether you can handle it or not is irrelevant. We can handle a lot of things. We handle the fact that there's countries that want to nuke us. There's countries out there that that you know involve themselves in terrorism want to end our way of life. Um, you know, we can handle a lot. We're about to handle a, a hurricane that's barreling down right now uh, on, on New Orleans, as terrible as it is. So we can handle the truth. But then, of course, I turn to social media and I see sometimes the the, the comments I get against me. And, you know, I, I scratch my head and say, well, you know what, maybe... <laughs> Um, maybe they can't handle the truth. Maybe, maybe you know, here they're shooting the messenger and just trying to give them what they wanted. And, and you know, now I'm the bad guy and the enemy. And I can't tell you how many times I, I, I slammed the computer shut and say, you know what? Screw them. They can't handle the truth. They don't deserve the truth. Let them live in darkness. And, and you know, maybe in 100 years, I'll be ready. I, I'm being honest with you. But then, of course, you know, I'll, 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 I'll have a chance to kind of sit down for a second, take a breath and, and you know, collect my thoughts and say, okay, you know, enough, enough of the pity party. Let's, let's, let's get back to work, roll our sleeves up and, and let's continue to, to have this conversation. So um, I get it. Um, I do think that, that people can, can handle the truth. Um, I'm committed to the truth. In fact, I don't think you can have freedom uh, without truth. The two go hand in hand. 
you can't claim to be a free society if, if you don't if you don't pursue the truth and you don't provide the truth to 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 your citizens. Um, you're just at that point, it's just propaganda and tyranny. UAP has a question and it says, did Lou ever visit Skinwalker Ranch? And if he did, did he experience anything unusual? Uh, you know, I'm going to let somebody else, uh, you know, Skinwalker Ranch uh, is, is a fascinating place. And, uh, you know, I, I will tell you, there's definitely things, in my opinion, that go bump in the night. Um, I, I know it's probably not very pleasant to think about, but but I've, I've seen enough uh, evidence to suggest that, you know, there's there's something going on there. Um, I would recommend talking to to Brandon Fugel um, only because he's the new owner of, of that facility. I am certainly not qualified. Um, a lot of that work was done under the auspices of OSAP um, and uh, under Bob Bigelow and, and uh, the former director before me. Um, they're certainly more qualified to, to tell you what they think about Skinwalker Ranch. Um, am I aware of some pretty weird things happening there? Absolutely. Uh, am I aware of, of some of these things happening to my own people? Yeah, I, I am. Um, but that's, when are you going to write a book, Lou? When are you going to write uh, a book? I don't want to read my book. <laughs> it, it would it would already be a, like a New York bestseller. Um, Preston has a question. Says, Lou, grateful for your dedication to this topic. Can you assure us this is a true unknown and not related to nemesis slash palladium type yeah. programs? Yeah, palladium. Um, so he's palladium, talking about, a, 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 he or she is, uh, Preston is talking about electronic warfare. Um, the problem with electronic warfare, it, it works off the electromagnetic spectrum, and I, I can't go into too much detail because I would, you know, I would get into some sensitive stuff. But the bottom line is, you can spoof a radar, but you can't spoof the human eye. That's just the bottom line. So, any type of electronic warfare, yes, you can, you can, you can fool a radar into thinking an object is either there or it's not there, or there's a bunch of them. But you can't fool the human eye, and you can't fool gun camera footage. Um, you know, so so therein lies the problem. Um, the problem is that our pilots are encountering these things. The problem is that our sailors are encountering these things and our, and our soldiers um, and, and our airmen. Um, so it's, it's, um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's simply not, it, it's not a viable option to say this is nemesis or palladium because, um, because it doesn't explain the other aspects of this phenomenon. It doesn't it, it doesn't explain the eyewitness testimony and accounts and and the actual footage that that we've been privy privy to. Absolutely. Um, another question is: Hi, Lou. If you were a civilian scientist and could place a limited amount of sensor systems around the globe, where would you focus on placing them in order to capture data on UAP? Thanks. So I will share something with you. I'm not going to, uh, uh, I won't go into too much, too much detail, but we're looking at that right now. And you'd be oh. surprised. It's a lot easier than you might think. Um, you may not even need a whole bunch of sensors. You might just need one and you might need to know where to put it and then how to cooperate that data with other data. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a very polite pass on that because my hope is that uh, in the not too distant future, I can share the, pr the precise answer to that. And uh, I think, I think uh, you know, I use this, I don't use this term very often, but I think it's going to blow your mind. I, I think you guys are going to go, oh my God, <laughs> it's been there all along. It's it's so cute when you have like a good question, but you can't answer it. You'll do like this really cute little smirk and you're like, I know and I want to say it, but I can't. Know, which is really why I wasn't a good intelligence officer, because my poker face is terrible. <laughs> I just, you know, I get really excited because some oh, of these questions are, are so wonderful. And I'm like, I just want to tell you. Uh, but, um, you know, again, we got to we got to make sure we do this right. Rich says, and thank you everyone for the super chat. I know I'm not saying thank you, but thank you all so, so much. Rich says, has Lou ever been in the presence of some washing, uh, sorry, sorry, I said washing, uh, some machine slash yes, crash? Yes, a washing machine. <laughs> I, I try to avoid it as much as possible, but yes, I've been in front of washing machines before. Because <laughs> another question was playing in my head that someone else asked, but uh, some machine slash craft of non-human origin. Um. Let me go back to the question that I answered before. In my opinion, is it the U.S. government in possession of of exotic material? Um, I answered yes to that. Uh, I, I can't go. I, as I said before, I cannot elaborate any more than that. 
I, I, there's very specific reasons why I can't, and I have to, I have to honor and acknowledge those those reasons and those requests. So, for the time being, I'm going to do a polite pass on that question. Very good question, uh, and one question that I hope to to be able to to discuss a little further at some point. I want to mention to everyone where I have about 10 minutes for the show. There is going to be an extra 15 minutes for all my Patreon supporters. So this question here by Red Panda Koala is going to be our last question for the day. But um, I also want to mention, you know, if if you had one that you want to ask, um, what's going to like, what's the answer to that? So here we go. I don't think what I said made sense, but. It'll make more sense as we go on. But uh, Red Panda Koala says, Lou, do you think Havana syndrome is related to UAP? Sounds like a tip slide nine. Uh, 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 um, first of all, a, a profoundly relevant question. Um, one that I'm not prepared to answer right now. Um, I'm thinking in my mind right now the number of individuals that are would be <laughs> breathing down my neck if I could go into that. Um, you know, there there are some very interesting peculiarities. I am not qualified to discuss uh, the nuances of Havana syndrome. I think we are still trying to figure that out. Um, that's all I can say. Okay. Well, here we go. We do have a few extra minutes. So and eight, we have eight more minutes and I'm sorry, I misread the time. So we are going to go over a few more. And the last one is it's like my favorite question of all time. But here we go. Another question is 94. There was a sighting at a school in Africa where many school children claim to have seen beings exit a craft and some were given a message telepathically. The message was that we are destroying our planet. What are your thoughts on that? Quite and possible. thank you. Yeah, quite, quite possible. Uh, it's it's it, you can't disprove it. It's it's interesting anecdotal data, uh, but at the end of the day, you can't quantify and qualify it. Um, it is personal perception, and that's based on human psychology. Um, I'm not saying it's it's not it, it's not relevant. The problem is there, there's there's no way to objectively take that data and 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 employ the scientific method to determine the veracity of that information. And so as a result of that, um, we didn't really include that type of data into our ATIP efforts um, later on, certainly when I, when I was part of the, when I was in charge of the effort, uh, because from a DOD perspective, a Department of Defense perspective, there was no way I could go to a, a leader in, in the government and say, hey, sir, hey, ma'am, um, you know, these kids claim to have telepathic communication with these beings, whatever they may be. Um, that that doesn't that doesn't do anything for the conversation doesn't doesn't help a leader make a decision one way or the other. So we kept everything that we could, you know, that kept the conversation to that data that can be measured and can be tabulated and can be, you know, if you will, compared to other data that we had and other signatures. Signature data is very important. Um, you know, everything has a signature. This pen, if I throw it in the air, will have a signature. There will be small, discrete changes in, in the air around it um, that can that can be measured. And when you talk about potential telepathic communication, you know, between species, um, there's there's no there's no real signature there that you can you can grab a hold of. Or, or if there is a signature, it's beyond our technology to 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 really do anything with. Um, so. It, it, it's certainly interesting, but it wasn't a focus of of us in ATIP, and so therefore I can't I can't really elaborate. Um, is it possible? Sure. Is it true? Could be. Uh, is it uh, uh, just human interpretation of something? Yeah, that could be that too. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, and therefore I it's probably best that I don't provide my opinion because it's at the end of the day it's unqualified. It's an unqualified opinion that I have. Another, another question is, uh, Christopher Mellon has mentioned in several past interviews that UAP activity has been increasing and getting bolder. Is this something you can corroborate? And if so, are you able to share any examples with us today? It, it does appear certainly that there are, that the UAP activity seems more provocative. Um, it seems less afraid, less elusive, more in our face. 
um, you know, more willing to 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 defy our controlled airspace. Um, that I agree with wholeheartedly. That's that's a concern for us. Um, but the question with metrics, you always have to be careful because now we have more people, you know, with with these little devices in their hands uh, that have, you know, better technology in them than our best gun camera footage did 15 years ago, right? Our best gun cameras uh, and, and pod, FLIR pods. So we have to be careful to because you know there's more people now looking into it's like saying in, in a in a for example a big city you know has crime rates have 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 gone up five percent well what does that mean is it really that there's more criminals on the street or does it mean that we have more cops on the street that are catching criminals or does it mean that we have now a more aggressive da that's prosecuting criminals right so you have to be careful with numbers because numbers can mean a lot of things to a lot of people and so that's why you know i'm always right. careful to 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 make a, a definitive statement that you know that the uap activity is increasing what we can say is that that technology is more proliferated uh so more people have these devices in their hands and are able to collect more people are aware of things in our skies and more people are looking into the skies which by the way means more people are going to misidentify things so you know before we all rush to the conclusion and say hey this is great you know we have more ufo activity and we're going to see more things well yeah, but we're also going to see a lot of uh, have a lot more more uh, uh, misses as well because we're going to have a lot more opportunity to misidentify things. Look, Starlink is up there. I, I was sitting not too long ago uh, on a, on an early evening and watched fifty two satellites in in a line um, cross over the cross over the horizon. Um, you know, just five years ago that would have been shocking, and yet here it is. It's just Starlink. So, and and it's I think it's very it, it's very normal that people are misidentifying these things especially now more than ever and i quickly want to say gene thank you so much they say no question just a thank you for a great show that i'll enjoy listening to a couple a few a few couple more times sorry about that but i agree um for people that have watched the loose interviews he always drops little things here and there and you you have, got, you have to listen to it a few times to really catch it so I agree with you, Jean. My next question is, given everything you've learned, in your opinion, has the intelligence behind the UAP phenomenon already been designated behind closed doors as an like as an external threat and an, ex, an existing threat? You know, I think there's two schools of thought. I think definitely from a from a national security perspective, it's viewed as a potential threat but let's not confuse potential threat with hostile intent right so i've said this before if i go to an airport and jump on a 737 you know southwest flight to denver there's not much of a threat there but if i go onto the runway the tarmac of that same airport and get behind that same airplane and put my head behind the engine while it's throttling up well now there's a threat there's a threat to my hearing there's a threat to my i'm going to get burned uh there's an environmental threat uh, is it intentional? Not necessarily. It's just a product of the technology. Um, you know, so I, I, I think there's two schools of thoughts on it. Um, I, you know, when I was in the government, my, my focus had to be that this is a potential national security threat. Uh, but now that I'm outside the government, I'm free to express my own opinion a little bit more. And, you know, I'm, I think with every, with every challenge comes opportunity. Um, one only has to look at the at the Apollo mission in the 1960s and the space race against the Soviet Union, then Soviet Union. Over 6,200 life changing technologies and in industry came out of the result of that little space race. Uh, you know that decade in time where now we have things like the LED light bulb, we have the CAT scan, things that are improving humanity's uh, well being on this planet and have long outlived their original intent and purpose. So, you know, I, I tend to be a little bit more optimistic. I, I, I don't think everything that's necessarily a, a, a threat is, is an intentional threat. And I think there's always opportunity. You just need to, to, to know how to, how to look for it. And right now, everyone's asking about the 23-minute video. Can you talk about that? Uh, I, I can't. Uh, what I can say is that I was privy to it, uh, many videos. Um, I, I have to. I have to let the government try to do its due diligence, um, and and you know, let's not forget that the Pentagon, Pentagon claimed to erase and destroy all my emails, um, despite there being a, a court protective order uh, that that uh, restricted that. 
Um, so they've they've got some 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 questions they have to answer. Uh, and I want to give the, the the U.S. government, the Pentagon, uh, the time necessary to to figure that out. Um, you know, the I, there's videos that are very compelling. I, I've said before that the three videos that came out are probably the least compelling. Um, as, as compelling as they may be, they're, they're the least compelling. There's some that are pretty extraordinary, uh, but I, they haven't been released. It's not up to me to release them. And I really can't talk about them until at some point the government decides it wants to, first of all, locate them. And then second of all, uh, provide them. RG has a question and they say, does DHS red cell ever used UAP simulation events to test US military responses, which may have been confused as real events. And this is gonna be the last super chat for today, guys. We are wow. running out of time, but please answer that, Lou. You know, I gotta tell you, I've never been asked that before. Uh, it, that's a that's a, a fascinating question, one that I'm going to talk to to my colleagues about, Chris and some other people back in D.C. Um, you know, that's certainly a possibility. Um, I've I've personally have never never considered that before, and that's why I love doing these because your audience is is so sophisticated. They're always coming up with these great questions, and I can't tell you how many times that that these questions will come up, and I'll go run right back to D.C. and be like, you know, hey guys, we got to talk. You know, um, that's that's great. That's great. I, I, I'm not avoiding the question. I just, I, I simply don't know, but I, I can tell you this. I promise you this. Um, I will ask the question and I will report back what I find. And here is our last question for the show. What is one question you haven't been asked, but wish you had been? What is it? And what's the answer? Because hmm. uh, you've know, done thousands of interviews i have and there's so many questions that still need to be asked uh, there isn't one that's better than the other because we're putting together a jigsaw puzzle right it's it's no one piece of that jigsaw puzzle is going to put the whole puzzle together and give you that aha moment ah there it is now the now the whole puzzle comes together um that's not the way it works um, all pieces are critical all pieces are important I personally don't have the patience to put together a jigsaw puzzle because it drives me crazy because every single piece is important. And what I do is I do what most people do. I kind of categorize them according to shapes and straight edges. Okay. These are going to be on the perimeter and color. Okay. This is probably part of that scene and, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, um, there is no piece more important. There is no question. There is no golden question out there that people should say, well, okay, how do we, you know, if we only ask this question to Lou, then we would have all the answers. That's sadly not the case. All questions are important and all questions should be asked. Um, is there a question that people should have asked me? You know, I, I think I think we're on a great roll. I think the questions that are being asked here tonight were some of the most insightful I've had a chance to answer in a very long time. Um, in fact, I'm kind of surprised because every single one of your questions are great questions from your audience. You know, usually when, when I first came out, people were asking me, you know, all sorts of stuff, you know, and, and some of the questions were, were, you know, probably a little bit, a little bit more basic than others. Um, so but, then let's give an applause to everyone that's watching and put in their questions. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. You, I mean, you were able to answer a lot of them. And like you said, these were questions that haven't been asked. People that were writing these questions have seen your interviews and they were getting frustrated. They're like, why aren't people asking these questions that I want to yeah. ask? So I think I was very lucky to be able to host this today and actually have people ask their questions along with the ones that were sent to me prior. And overall, it's I, it's been such a blessing for you to be here with me today and Christina, to have this please, conversation. No, no, I assure you it's the other way around. It is, look, <laughs> uh, we are only succeed. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again because, you know, I, I don't know if people don't believe me or what, but look, we're only where we are today because we can collectively have this conversation. The only reason why you can do what you do is because you have an audience that's listening, that's interested. And that's the only reason why I can come out and I can have the conversation I'm having. So at the end of the day, we're only here because of your audience. It's, it, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's not, it's not me. And I, I don't know how to emphasize that enough. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of look up to me in, in a way that, 
uh, I frankly I don't deserve. I, I really don't deserve it. It's it's it. The credit goes to to your audience and, and folks like you. And I foot stomped that a thousand times. And now people say, oh, he's just being you know gracious. He's he, you know he's being humble. But it's true. It's absolutely true. We achieved this collectively over the last three years because of the hard efforts of everyone right now that's listening. And and I can't I can't overstate that enough. When I have conversations in D.C., they're watching Twitter. They're watching your show. They, they're dialing in in a pseudo because they don't want to expose themselves. But make no mistake, they're watching your videos. I, got, I can't say who it was, but very recently I got an email from a very, very, very senior person. And, and I said very three times because they are very senior. And they said, hey, I saw that interview on this podcast. And you know what? The podcast was yours. It was it, it wasn't CNN or Fox News or BBC. It was your podcast. And they said, hey, man, that was that was that was great. So, um, you know, you guys are making a difference. This this is it. This is the future. This is this is how we have this conversation with 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 everyone. Um, and, and it's not going to be done by a politician. I assure you. Uh, disclosure is is only going to happen because of because of you and your audience. So by the uh, people. Man. Yep. By the people. To you. And I want to say again, thank you for you, Lou, for being here, for all of the super chats, for everyone participating, for all of my Patreon supporters. I do want to let you know that we are going to have an extra 15 minute segment just for the Patreon supporters that will be uploaded later today. So keep an eye out for those that are or if you want to be one, it really supports my channel and you get to see all the guests or I think almost all of them get an, a, like an exclusive 15 minutes as well. And I also want to say, don't forget to like this video to share it with people that have the same interest because it wouldn't be possible if this conversation wouldn't be possible if we had a collective mind and lastly don't forget to keep your eyes on the sky watch more podcast clips now on our youtube channel go to livewire podcast clips and watch more great podcast videos just like this one